Hello friends, this is Wayward Echo. Today we're going to be talking about electricity in Seven Days to Die. So it's a pretty robust topic here to go through. So if you look over here, I'll give you a breakdown. Uh, I tried to look at this logically and step through the different aspects of electricity. And if you look starting up at the top here, we've got the source of the electricity. That's just what's producing it. You've got the transmission. That's how the power actually gets somewhere. You've got the controls, which indicates how you're going to manipulate that power. You can do it through switches, through plates, other different things. And then lastly, you've got where is it targeting? What's it actually going to uh, affect? Is, are you going to turn on a light? Are you going to turn on a trap? All that good stuff. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to talk about how you make electricity. Uh, what are the different things that you can use to make electricity with? And how do you make those? And then how do you do just basic wiring. And with that, we're going to get started. Let's go. All right, so here we are on our lovely rooftop electric lounge, and we're going to look from left to right here. We've got our three power sources in seven days to die. You've got the generator, the battery bank, and then you've got the solar bank. So starting off with the generator, this is the first one that you're going to get access to in seven days to die. And you're going to unlock this when you get advanced engineering level three. So if I just take a look here under our skills and we head on over to intellect and head down to advanced engineering and then level three is going to give you generator. So this is your first uh, foray into the electrical world in seven days to die. So pretty easy to make this guy. You just got to go over to your workbench. We're going to look up generator bank here and 11 forged iron, 11 mechanical parts, and then you've got 16 electrical parts to work with. Pretty straightforward, not hard to get. The electrical and mechanical parts you'll get from breaking down vehicles or air conditioning units or things that you find about. And then the forged iron can either be iron that you collected, uh, dumped in your forge, and then recast back into forged iron to use. So let's grab a few things here and go set this bad boy up. So looking at the generator, it's a pretty simple interface. You've got fuel that can go in here and that'll show up with your gas. So we can try to refuel this. Boom. So holds up to a thousand. And then we can start adding in engines. So you'll see as you add in an engine to this, it's going to increase the max output. And once you have a single engine in it, you can turn this guy on. So down here, it's going to say power. This is how much draw that you have currently on it. So if I come here and connect this up, ideally not disconnect, but connect, you'll see the big wire. And then we've got just a basic light bulb that's going to do five watts. Now, when I come in here and look, you're going to see a five watt power draw. So you notice these are locked, much like a lot of the other crafting benches and other things in Seven Days to Die. You got to turn it off first if you want to do any modifications to it. So we can add in up to six of these guys, as I mentioned, and that's going to get you to a total output of 300 watts. So again, when we turn it on, you're going to see the, the load that's on this generator. So it's five watts. And that way, you know, if you've got multiple things chained, you can see about you know, how much, how much you're pulling from this individual source. So that's the generator, pretty straightforward. Um, not a lot of tricks or things to know about it. So next we have on here is the battery bank. This one's a little bit more complicated. You're going to unlock this one with advanced engineering level four. Uh, so once you get this one, again, almost the exact same interface. You're just missing the fuel aspect of it because the fuel aspect will be taken, uh, will be covered by the lead car batteries that you're gonna be inserting in this. So by itself, it doesn't do anything. You're gonna have to toss a battery into this. And then one thing to note that's a little bit different. So the engines you noticed, they didn't have a level to them. They're just engine. So if you look down across here, you've got different levels of car batteries one two three four five six and so each one of these is going to have a different output so one is going to give you 29 two will give you 33 three will give you 37 and so on and they go all the way up to level six where you get 50. so if you have six of these at 
level uh or six of these at level six you're gonna hit that same 300 watt max power that you had in your um generator so other thing to note uh, once you turn this on same thing as before doesn't have any draw right now because nothing is connected but just like before if we take this guy connect it up here come back inside and we've got a five watt draw on it now also important thing to know about the battery bank here when you're looking at this this first slot here it, it's going to pull sequentially so it's going to start draining this first battery here before it moves on to the rest of them so that's the battery bank we'll leave that just chugging along there with that little light on so the last one that we have here is the solar bank so the solar bank is going to be really late game and this is kind of a weird one because you cannot make the solar bank uh, and you cannot make the solar cells which go in the solar bank so for this one the only way to get to this is to go into your nope not there So the solar bank is a little bit different than the rest of these because you can't unlock it through perks. You can't find a schematic. There is only one way to get the solar bank. And in order to do that, you are going to have to come into here under intellect and you will have to pick up all five levels of better barter. And the reason this is, is because this last level here where it tells you trader secret stash shows the best loot. That is the one and only way that you can get this solar bank. So the solar bank will come out of level five uh, better barter, but at level four, you can start to find the solar arrays. That's a little bit helpful so that um, as you're building up to those last few levels, because you've got to get your intellect all the way up to be able to get better barter five. Um, so you'll be able to get access to those solar uh, cells as you go. So similar interface to the battery here. Uh, where you've got six slots here. These are going to be for the solar cells. And much like the batteries, you also have um, varying levels from one up to six. And much like that, you're going to see an increment here. So level one is going to give 17. Level two will give 20, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes all the way up to level six. Now you will see one big difference here in that that doesn't scale all the way to 50. So even at max here, when you fully spec this thing out, you're only getting up to 180 watts of power. So not nearly as much from a capacity standpoint as, um, as either the battery bank or the generator, okay? So same thing as before, we can turn this on. Again, there's no draw right now on it, but if we take this and we connect it up here, we look at it we're going to see that it's drawing five watts of power now there is one other bonus setup that you can do if you're looking late game um, you can take these last two the battery bank and the solar bank and kind of combine these so that you have a dual power scenario so that you can use the solar bank both during the day and then charge up some batteries at night this is actually really uh really really simple so if I just take the line from the solar bank here and I bring it into the battery bank and then I can get rid of this chain up here. If we think of this as our powertrain here, you know, we had we could link this light up over here and have them continue out. Same thing, we'll remove this one. So if we imagine that this is our base at night, we had power coming from the solar it's going into the battery bank. And during the day, what's gonna happen, if we take a look at this, we look at this battery, see if we can see it slowly edge up. We're gonna see over time, it's going to start to refill that battery. So during the day, you can have the batteries recharge back up. And then at night, it's just gonna draw down all those and that's gonna give you pretty much so infinite power over time. Now, obviously it depends on the number of traps and lights and all that good stuff that you have set up in there. But otherwise, that should cover you in terms of, of power. All right, folks, so that is it for the source aspect of Electricity in Seven Days to Die. 
Uh, in the next one, we'll talk about the controls. This is when it gets much, much more interesting in terms of what you can do to manipulate uh, when lights come on, when traps come on, and do all kinds of fun things like that. So if you found this useful, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. I uh, really appreciate that. And otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.